Okay, geometry lesson number one. This is like geometry 101. You wanna understand some basic terms and how to write uh, the different uh, lines, points, planes. And then we're gonna jump into some typical questions that you experience in this first geometry lesson. So let's go over the terms first. So we're gonna work with undefined terms. These are terms that are basically accepted uh, as true. We don't have to uh, prove anything, we just accept it. Uh, the first thing is a point, and a point basically we represent in geometry as a dot. And it's basically infinitesimally small, but it just locates a point in space. Right? And so what we do is we just label it with a capital letter like A, or you can have another point over here, B. And so you would just say, if you were um, identifying the point, you would just say point A. Or if you were saying point B, point B, like that. Okay, now when we talk about a line, you know from Algebra 1, you know, a line, it goes in you know, two directions, and uh, it keeps going forever and ever, right? It's a set of points, and uh, we know it looks something like this. But when you identify a line, you wanna use two points that are on the line. Like say, for example, if you have a point X and Y that are on the line, the way you write it, the notation, it's kinda of like a pictograph, you know, or a picture, or like hieroglyphics. You would draw X and Y, and you would draw actually like that line symbol above X and Y to indicate that it's a line, that it keeps going in both directions. Or you could say Y, X, it doesn't matter the order. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that a point is actually zero dimensional. So it's like no dimension, whereas a line is 1D or one dimensional. When we get to a plane now, a plane is like a flat surface, kind of like the floor or like a wall or the ceiling, right? Uh, that's uh, two dimensional and we generally draw it like a rectangle or a parallelogram to kind of show that, you know, that it's a flat surface, but you have to kind of realize that it keeps going, you know, in uh, forever and ever like on this flat surface at that level. Uh, but when you label a plane, you can either use like a capital letter, like it'll indicate in like the one of the corners of the plane. So for example, I could call this plane M. Or what you can do is you can pick three points that are not in a straight line. Say for example, like if this is A, B, and C, I could write this as plane a, B, C, that's another way to do it. But you wanna make sure that they're not in a straight line. Now why, why do you not want them to be in a straight line? Well, if they were in a straight line like this, there is more than one plane or more than one flat surface that could go through those three points. So that's why when you draw three non-collinear points, meaning that they're not in a straight line, there's only one plane or one flat surface that goes uh, through those three points. So the plane, remember, is two-dimensional. And then we get to space, which is what we think of as you know three-dimensional, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So we have 0D, 1D, 2D, 3D. Now when we move over here to segments, a segment is like a portion of a line. It has basically a beginning and an end, right? We call these two points where it starts and finishes as endpoints, and so when you write your segment, you would pick these two endpoints, X and Y, and you just put like a bar above them. So that represents a segment. Now you can also write it the other way, y, x, with that bar above it to indicate that it's a segment and not a line with the, the line symbol above it. With a ray, you think of a ray as like a ray of sunshine, right? It's like there's a photon at, at the sun and it's going out from the sun towards the earth. It just goes one direction. It has an endpoint. We call this an endpoint, but you can think of it as like a starting point, and it just goes that one direction. So this is what we would call ray CD, and when you draw the symbol for a ray, you always want to draw it to the right. So for example, with this ray here, notice how the ray is actually going to the left. Look at the way we're going to write this. We're going to write this as EF, and see how the arrow is pointing like towards F. It's starting at E, right, and it's going towards F, and it keeps going. So that's ray EF. So that's just the convention that it's always drawn pointing to the right, even if the ray is pointing to the left. And then opposite rays, what does that mean, opposite rays? Well, it means that they're going 180 degrees opposite one another, and together they form a line. But the key is you want them to have the same starting point, which remember these starting points are called endpoints, and so you would write the two opposite rays here as RT, see it starts at R and goes towards T, and R. S, so it starts at R and it goes towards S and keeps going. So together it forms line ST or RT or TS. You just need two points on the line to, to write uh, the line. Now, as far as intersection goes, when we talk about intersection, we're talking about what points to the 
objects have in common. Or when you think of intersection, you probably think of like where do the two objects cross. So if you have two lines, they're always going to cross at a point, okay, like that, unless they're parallel or skew, and we'll get into that later. Uh, but over here, when you have two planes, these are like two flat surfaces, where they cross is actually at a line. So if lines intersect, they cross at a point. If planes intersect, they're going to cross at a line. Let me erase the whiteboard. I've got some specific questions that you're going to encounter, and we'll work through those next. Okay, pause the video if you want and see if you can answer these questions, and we're going to go through them together here. So what I want you to do is name all of these uh, quantities here. So name a point in this diagram here. So what do you think? So I think uh, there's a lot of answers here. There's more than one correct answer. But for example, we could just say T. That's a point. Or we could say S. Or we could say W. Any of those would be correct. Uh, you only have to list one. For number two, you want to name a line. So what do you think a good one for a line would be? Well, there's a lot of options here. I'm going to pick maybe like this line right here, uh, WX. And I'm going to put the line symbol above it to indicate that it's a line. That's very important. It doesn't matter the order of the, the uh, points, uh, the letters here, but you definitely want to put the line symbol above it to indicate that it's a line. For a segment, what do you think would be a good example of a segment? Well, how about if we do from S to X? So that would be S, X. We'll just put a bar above it. Now, your teacher is going to be very particular about this notation, so you want to make sure you uh, really get a good grasp of this. Don't be too uh, sloppy with it. For number four, array. Okay, what do you think a good example of array would be? I'm going to say ray uh, XR. XR. So that means it's starting at X, it's going towards R, and it keeps going. Notice how that symbol is going to the right, even though the ray is going downward, right? For number five, a pair of opposite rays. Now, a lot of times when you're doing these problems, if you look at the words very carefully, it'll tell you what it is. Like pair, that means like a pair of shoes, like two, right? Opposite, right? So we're thinking 180 degrees opposite, rays. So a pair of opposite rays, a good example would be something like XS and XR. So we could say X going towards S and keeps going, X going towards R and keeps going, but they have that same endpoint. Uh, end point, you can think of it as the starting point, but they're going 180 degrees opposite to forming a line. What you don't want, by the way, is you don't want this situation where it's like, see how these have like different endpoints? Like, you don't want them to be like, uh, I'll just see if I can draw it like this. You wouldn't want this to be, let's say this is ABC. You wouldn't want to do ray uh, AC and ray BA because then they don't have the same starting point. You want it to have the same starting point and then from there go 180 degrees opposite. For number six, name a plane. Well, remember, a plane's a flat surface. We could say plane A. That would be one option, right? So plane A. Or you could pick three points that are not in the same flat surface. So we could say like uh, X, S, W. So I could say plane X, S, W. You just use three points. You don't want to do four, five, six. Just pick three points that are not in a straight line. Uh, that defines a plane. And then another name for plane A well, that's kind of funny. We just did that one, XSW, but we could do, let's say, XRW. That's this flat surface as well. So that's another option, plain XRW. For number eight, three collinear points. Now, we, we didn't talk about this too much in, uh, yet, but when you see the word co, that means same. When you see the word linear, that means like line. So we're looking for three points that are in a, on the same line. So an example here would be uh, S, X, and R. So S, X, and R. Now three coplanar points, so three points that are in the same plane, meaning the same flat surface. So we could do, for example, T, W, and X. They're in this flat plane B, right? So let's do X, W, and T. Uh, points that is not collinear with line W, X. So here's line W, X, a point that's not on that line. How about point T? That would work. Uh, a point that's not coplanar with plane B. So plane B is this flat surface right here, but we want a point that's not in that same plane. We could pick R, or we could pick S. So I'll just say R. And then we want to find the intersection of line L and M. Now, we didn't talk about this uh, earlier when we were talking about lines, but another way that they sometimes label lines is with like a little cursive letter at the end of the line. So you could call this like uh, line L, like that, or you could say line M, okay, for this line. Uh, but the intersection of line L and M, where do they cross? 
at point X. Remember, two lines, when they cross, they cross at a point. And then what's an intersection of plane A and plane B? So this flat surface and this flat surface, where do they cross or intersect? You can see they're intersecting right at this line. We could say line M, or we could say line XW. Either of those would work. So I hope this uh, helped you understand a little bit about the notation and an introduction into geometry. If you want to see more geometry videos, I've got a ton of them on my Mario's Math Tutor YouTube channel. You can check out the playlist that I'm going to put right there for you. You can use it as you're going through your class. If you're trying to review geometry, there's a lot of good information there. I'll see you over in those videos.